Hi, beautiful ones. My intention with the Shamanjelic Healing Podcast is to be a platform that explores real life issues and provides you with valuable insights and practical tools to support you on your journey of healing core wounds and reclaiming your power and manifesting a thriving, impactful life that you absolutely love. You see, it's my dream to inspire millions to shine. So if you find these topics valuable, please take a moment and share the podcast and leave us a rave review. This helps the podcast grow and reach the people that would greatly benefit from these insights. Thank you so much for tuning in and investing in your personal development. I'm right here walking this journey with you. So let's dive into this episode. Welcome to the Shamangelic Healing Podcast, extra juicy uh, conversation that we're going to have today with my soul brother, Gerard Adams. And this brother, and I, I love you so much, and I'm so inspired by what you're doing. And uh, you have been named one of the top 100 most influential leaders to watch, as well as a self made millionaire by 24. And, you know, your passion is really all about advising thought leaders and igniting the fire of entrepreneurs and people to really lead at the next level. Your podcast, which we will have in the show notes, is Leaders Create Leaders. And I'm like, yes, when we connected, I'm like, yes, yeah. this brother is on purpose and on mission with, with my passion as well. And um, anyway, brother, Welcome to the show. I'm so excited to jam with you today all about conscious leadership as well as how to really live an impact driven life. Welcome, Gerard. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Anahata. It's such an absolute honor to be with you in this moment right now, connecting and sharing and learning and creating, co creating. And so, um, just saying hello to every one of our listeners for dropping in and gratitude. Yeah. You know, we met uh, a, a couple weeks ago. I was uh, invited by your team to come and do uh, a really cool little drop in for your whole group of leaders that are stepping into their leadership. And that was just so much fun jamming with your whole group. It was remarkable. Uh, that was like my favorite workshop we have done in the mastermind. You just, you were on fire and it was just, it was amazing. Honestly, it really broke down conscious leadership in such a, uh, just an, just an easy, concise, powerful, way to help them to discern the difference of an unconscious versus conscious leader and just so much gratitude for for your work and for your wisdom and even though that was the first time we have collaborated i just want to honor you for shamangelic in the breath work and the healing that you create through that modality because the actual first time i experienced you which had us reach out was from fit for service and the summit and me actually going through your class and the breakthrough that i had um in that breath work that's unlike any other that i've ever experienced so thank you so much for the work that you that you bring to the world oh thank you that warms my heart and and this is where we really have a common synergy is hey let's go deep let's go let's get real mm -hmm. Let's take action. Let's look at our part. Let's uh, evolve and grow. And you are just an igniter and an amplifier, brother. That's why <laughs> there's so much synergy between us. So um, uh, let's jam a little bit about conscious leadership because clearly you're doing that and you're embodying that, but also you're supporting other leaders to do that. And that's really where I think we get this ripple effect when one person supports one person that is supporting a lot of people in my healing practice. Of course, I love to support people that are coming here as individuals, but where I really get lit up is to support the pillars in the community that are really having big impact and you're one of those. Um, so what do you think makes a conscious leader? You know, like why is that so important right now? Well, I think more than ever before, right now, we need leaders. We need real leadership. And it's clear when we look at 2020, 
that we just lived through one day, we will look back at this year that we just overcome and it's still so, so much still present in our lives that a lot of people have said it, it was like the year of hell, you know, with, with the fires that had broken out, the pandemic, from a health crisis, the economy, um, the riots and the, with racism, just the amount of disconnection that we have seen present um, is somewhat beautiful because it actually is all coming to the surface, but it also is really bringing to awareness the need for conscious leaders that are leading from the heart, that are leading from the heart, no longer leading from the head, that the, the, the old paradigm of leaders that are uh, led and inspired by greed, by the fear of consciousness, it no longer works. And we know that now. We have seen what that has created. And it has actually statistically come out that if we don't make a shift, that the world will continue. The planet, Mother Nature, Mama, she, no Pacha Mama knows how to support herself. She's literally, her, you know, it's been created to support creation. Like Mother Nature's got this. We, as humanity, like we get to step forward and evolve and, to, and truly go through the healing that's needed and lead from the heart or we will not be around. Like the planet is making it very clear how important it is that we need to align now with mother nature, align to what our planet needs, to what humanity needs. We need the businesses that are created from this place. We need um, these just society to, to truly connect on from love consciousness and, and truly connect on that level from a place of, of love you know, of love. And it starts within us. And um, it's just really important to me at this at this stage in my career. I feel like it was such a blessing that I have gone through my own awakening. And, and I, the crazy thing is that leaders can be super successful. I mean, you look at Hitler, you look at some leaders that are out there that like they freaking done some crazy things to the, in the world and they still led a movement. And we've had a ton of CEOs and uh, entrepreneurs and, and political leaders that have created a lot of destruction. And for me personally, I have led from greed. When I went through my gene keys, there was a, a, a part of me for many years, over a decade, I've been an entrepreneur for 18 years, that I was leading from a place of just, uh, just insecurity, uh, unworthiness, um, proving myself and people pleasing and and so many other just wounds that I wasn't aware of that were in this that were just unconscious to me and yet I became a millionaire at 24 years old and so like it could you know you can be successful materialistically and externally and still be and and have millions of dollars but actually be broke as fuck can actually be spiritually bankrupt and I was one of them and so I was, you know, really given a gift from God to have an awakening and, and on some point of my journey, and it helped me to realign, to heal. I'm still on that, that's <laughs> still on that journey for the rest of my life. And I just now I feel so called to helping leaders to to go through that healing, to tap into purpose, to tap into who they truly are, their truth, and then lead from that place. And the ones that do, we're going to see the biggest. We are seeing the biggest shift that we've ever seen. And it's such an opportunity from a wealth perspective. There's a $30 trillion shift, the largest monetary shift that's ever happened in the economy. And I believe that the leaders that are actually solving problems that are going to support humanity, support our planet, support our future, those are the ones that are going to be on the right side of this shift. And not only be able to have massive success from a wealth standpoint, but more importantly, fulfillment freedom, impact, massive impact and create a legacy that will, um, that will really make a big difference in the world. Oh, you are, you're speaking to my heart and soul because uh, I think one of the things that when we see our greatest shadow with humanity and we see where unconscious leadership um, has taken us is in more of a divisive way, separating fear um, that, uh, and not focused on sustainability, what is uniting, what is, uh, what is going to create rather than destroy. And I think it was really clear. I love that you mentioned that this last year, we really got to see the disparity and the gap between unconscious leadership 
um, and what can happen with conscious leadership. And the gap provides the space for you, for I, for everybody watching and listening to step in and fill the void instead of sit back here and just bitch and complain and whine. Well, they're not doing it right. And the economy, this and politicians, X, Y, Z, or, you know, and, and bitch about the, the, the problems in the system. And this is where there is this huge opening for leaders as everyday people, nothing special about you and me, other than we believe that we're, we're capable of great things. Um, there's nothing different or gifted about you and I, but there's that, there's this willingness to say, Hey, there is a gap there and we can do better. Um, and I appreciate that you mentioned making the shift within, because that's where you can have a more sustainable impact, a more conscious impact when there's the willingness to look at internally, where am I creating for, from? And am I creating and then destroying my physical body? Am I creating and making money, but destroying the earth? Am I creating and then like my adrenals are, you know, in the tank? Am I creating, but um, I'm an asshole. And so I make, I'm a tyrant. And so my energy and relationships is destructive. It's demanding or chaotic. And so I love that you're saying that we're going to start here with, what's going on internally so that if there is internal alignment we can create if there's internal dissonance we'll be on that on the destruction and even if we have good intent we'll create but there will be residue of destruction of some kind and so it feels like the personal development journal journey personal accountability is is where we start so that we can be creating from a clean place not from greed or insecurity, or I have to prove myself because those are very destructive forms of motivation. And yet society supports those. Yeah. If you hustle, if you force, if you push, you get ahead, you, you, you get the oval office, you know? <laughs> um, and it, it feels like we're creating different success measures for what it is to be a conscious leadership leader and businesses is this an impact driven business? Is it a conscious business? Is it sustainable? And uh, you and I are on the same page here. So what do you think? Um, what do you think are the thoughts and the habits of a conscious leader versus an unconscious leader? Wow, I love this question. Um, it's something that's been very present for me recently with my tribe and just with in my own life. Um, and so I believe that a conscious leader has hierarchy of needs, similar to if we all know the Maslow hierarchy of needs. And for those, I, I have broken them down into what I believe is called this, it's the H5. And so as a, from a foundational level, it's health, mm -hmm. then it's harmony, then it's hustle, then it is happiness, and then it is heart. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I, I look at those five pillars in my life every single day, and it starts from like the smallest habits from the moment I wake up in, in, my, in my health and in, in creating harmony by waking up and not being reactive. It actually can even start from like the night before, but it's just how are we going from reactive to proactive and really just choosing to – to, uh, and, and, and how we're going to um, on our day, as our, as our good friend Aubrey Marcus would say, on the day. And so for day. me, it's, it's like every day I wake up and I start off with making my bed and washing up, but then going immediately and not touching the phone because immediately that will get me into a reactive mode, not going near the phone. And I just really master that morning routine and those rituals. Um, and, and so that I can have better energy management because um, so many people are focused on time management and they don't actually look at like what is their energy. And so I wake up and it's meditating right from the beginning of my day, dropping in, making sure that I honor God, that he's renewed my contract and, you know, honoring my ancestors is, I call it the three kisses. So after I meditate, I just honor God for another day and Christ consciousness. And, and, and then I go and 
do a second kiss and honor my ancestors. And more now than ever before, I've been really tapping into my ancestry and thinking about seven generations ago, the vision they had for me at this point in my life and, and how I get, and we all have get to be the new ancestors for the next seven generations. And so I honor my ancestors and then I honor the elements and I tap into water and what it means to me and i tap into the adaptability and the stillness and the poise of water and air and the abundance of air and the creativity of air and the and the decisiveness of air and then i tap into earth and saying today i'm going to be grounded i'm going to be rooted no matter what happens externally today no matter what i'm going to remember to stay rooted remember how far i've come and why i started and, uh, and then I go to the sun and then say, today I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to be reliable. I'm going to be powerful. And so I tap into these elements and that's the third kiss. And that's just how I start the day. And then I go right into movement and whether that's dance for you or yoga, or I love to work with a, a mastery movement coach and focus in on my health and make sure that I'm getting plenty of water and get out in nature and just these small things that make a massive, massive difference. And by the time I complete that, I'm able to get into my hustle and not hustle from a place of where I see so many CEOs, business owners, entrepreneurs that are reactive. They, they don't know how to prioritize. So they either, they don't even know what priorities are important or they just go and they prioritize everything and they're just like doing all these things and, and they're, um, they're just being reactive and super just busy bees, but not being productive or they don't even, uh, they, they don't necessarily know how to prioritize. And so with the hustle, like I, I'm very, at this point in my career, like focused on what is the big, what are the big rocks? What are the big priorities? What is the one thing that's in my zone of genius that I get to accomplish today? It's going to actually move the needle for my business, you know, and just one to three things and focusing on those and, and preparing for that in my day. And by the time I get to that, I have the energy. I already like won the day. And so then I can, I'll get more done and deep with deep work with those priorities in a four or five hour window than mo most people do in the 12 hour day uh, uh, in their hustle. And so, and then from there I go to happiness. Like what's one thing that I can do today to make me happy. And that's just like going playing fetch with my dog, Tucker, or our dog, uh, Ashley and I, and, and, or I'll go and jump on the jet ski or I'll go and play basketball a little bit, you know, or whatever that is for me, write and, and write some poetry. And then last but not least, heart. And that's, for those of you that are single, that's that self-love. What's something that you can do for you? That's just that self-love and, and, um, and really just honoring you and giving yourself the time to just get that rest, to get that care, take a bath, whatever that is for you that's going to feel good and nurture yourself, have, a, have your favorite meal. Um, or for if you're in a relationship like me and I'm recently engaged, it's the heart for me is connecting with Ashley and it's appreciating her and having tea, like that tea together at night. And how was your day and connecting and appreciating her or bringing her flowers or just doing things that's going to make her feel seen and, and uh, feel, have us have intimacy. And um, for me, those are the, those are the ways that I stay in a proactive state and really mastering my day as a conscious leader versus those that are, you know, like I said, they're waking up and they're just being reactive. They're looking at their phone. They're not, they're, you know, I rank each one of those players from one to 10. And so we did this also with your workshop. It's like, where are you at with health? Where are you at with harmony in your life? Where are you at in your hustle? Where are you at in happiness? Where you are, where are you in, in your heart? And if you're below a, you know, a seven and you're a five or six, like in your workshop, right? Then you have some, you know, it's time to look at those areas and take it to a level 10. And if you want level 10 results, you can't be treating internally, you can't be treating your mind, body, and spirit at a level five or a level one. You're not gonna get the results that you want. And I, I think um, I love everything that you said just about the morning habits and mindset and daily practices is what creates internal alignment. And this takes discipline. Like real leaders that are making conscious change change are, are disciplined with their time, with their thoughts, with their health, with their mindset um, and not giving it away to the phone, giving it away to other people's demands on your time, other people's priorities, giving it away to, you know, scrolling and, and cute kitties doing funny things. And that's great. Um, and 
uh, leaders are more disciplined, I feel, with their time and with their energy and with their thoughts and who they're around and what they will allow. It feels like there's clearer boundaries and clearer um, prioritization and protection of the morning, the morning routines. And I really appreciate that leaving the phone aside and having your morning practices. I think that that is a game changer that sets up the day and that, that the morning practice creates internal harmony so that you know you're resetting your vibrational attunement to whatever is important to you. And if you don't know what's important to you, I think somebody else is deciding that. If you don't know what is in your heart and what is where you're, where you're going at a soul level and what you're creating, somebody else is deciding that for you. And I feel that that's a very important awareness to bring back into a alignment, a weight. If I don't create, I'm not going to get where I'm going. And that's where at the end of life, we can be in this space of what happened. I was gonna, I was gonna, what, where did it, where did it go? And it's in these little choices over time that create the difference between getting to a meaningful, impactful summit where at the end of life we can say, yes, I was all in or where 20 minutes, an hour just gets wasted into a vortex of nothingness. And there goes that times every day, 30 minutes on the phone unconsciously or in social media or whatever it is, 30 minutes every day, 365 days creates a big chunk of your life that could have been creating something. Um, and it doesn't mean that we can't spend some time, you know, enjoying social media, but having a, what I call discipline, having a little discipline around it where it's like, all right, dive in for 15 minutes and dive out. And certainly not the first time, you know, the first thing in the morning, because that's when there is conscious leaders are creating internal alignment so that we can show up during the day and less reactive like energetically to, to, to the external chaos that might be happening. And if there's internal alignment, there's less, we're le less li likely to create an internal stress response and just be in that place of, okay, this is happening to me, not for me. There's a lesson here. There's a blessing here. And being able to respond rather than react with more internal grace. Not that I have always done that. And not that I always do that. To right. Our, right. <laughs> right? But at least I'm there's there's more of a chance that I'll be more graceful and this the internal tsunami won't have such as big waves. Yeah. Well, I'll come back to center quickly if I start with internal alignment. If I start with stress and anxiety, I'm more likely to correct react and make the situation worse and be unconscious in my response, which then I'll get angry at a client. I'll get angry at a, at a vendor or pick a fight with a loved one or make it worse than it is. And I think it's, that's where, like, what do you find are, are the unconscious things that contribute to, to chaos? Like the habits or thoughts or fears that, that make it worse or, or, uh, or destroy uh, great things. Yeah. Like what comes up is when you're saying all that, I'm like, and I've been there, you know, it's, it's self-sabotage. Like you're just, you are completely just self-sabotaging and, and you think you're getting, you think you're maybe you're going to figure it out and you're every day you're busy and you're doing all these things, but then you realize like, where am I actually even going? And you don't have the compass to actually say, well, you can, you can get to your destination in such a simpler, clearer way. If you're going in the right direction and so many people have this map and they're going in so many different directions, giving their energy away to, like you said, to everyone and everything and, and thinking that they're accomplishing things, but they're going in the wrong direction rather than actually knowing, Hey, this is the compass. This is where, you know, my alignment is, my purpose is, and they get to say no to like you mentioned that earlier and I was like yes the boundaries learning where how to say no is the most important thing when it comes to a leader it's learning those boundaries and learning what to say no to that's the number one difference between a fortune 500 and a fortune 50 ceo is the fortune 50 ceo knows how to say no more
That's mm. a fact. You know, Warren Buffett and uh, and Bill Gates got interviewed separately, same time. They asked, what's the number one attribute of, a, of someone that is a successful leader? They both gave the same answer, focus. Focus, your ability to focus. And like, what does focus mean? It's like getting, understanding how to concentrate at the important things. Yeah. And so just getting clear as to what those are is so important. And then you mentioned just choice. And for me, it's it's about understanding how to make those those choices every day that are going to set you up to win, that are going to set you up to be aligned to what success looks like for you. Versus, and just being able to tap in, pause. Okay, is this aligned to my mission, to my purpose, to my values? Mm, I want to do it. I want to help this. Blah, 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 blah. I know what that's like. Trust me. I'm a people pleaser. Uh, but you, once you start to master that, it's okay. You can with grace say no. Sometimes you don't have to use the word no to actually say no with grace. And that's that mastery and learning how to just actually, it's okay to put yourself first. It's okay to love yourself, to put yourself first. You matter. Your story matters. Your mission matters. Your purpose matters. You matter. If you're listening to this, put yourself first. Go for it and make choices from that place and integrity with you because I'll tell you, that is going to feel so good when you get to that last day, which is not guaranteed. It could be today. It could be tomorrow to know that you chose the life that you want to live on your terms that's aligned to where you're here, to your gift, to the reason why God has put you on this earth to make the world a better place, to make an impact and just choose that every day. And it is hard. 90 seconds after you turn off this podcast, you will be challenged. You will be challenged with the ego. You will be challenged with the limiting beliefs that you're not good enough, that you're not worthy, that you're not, that, you know, something's wrong with you, that you, you know, all the things will be challenged. People on your, they won't understand your journey. They won't understand it, especially if they haven't gone through their own path. So they will judge you. And if it's not them judging you, you're, you're your biggest own judge. Mm -hmm. And so you will judge yourself. And so you have to every day set yourself up to win and tap in and get clear shut it all off shut off the phone shut off the scrolling shut off the family if you have to and just say oh, take a weekend to just be still to just tap in and finally give yourself the grace and permission to listen to the divine within you because the answers are within you you don't need to go external and there's a million of these podcasts and books and YouTube videos and it's all out there. Trust me, but let me tell you, the number one genie, the number one, you know, blue, blueprint is literally right inside your heart. It is there if you can just take the time to listen and then master that. Master that little voice inside you. Listen to it. Oh, and yes, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I want everybody, save this podcast and, you know, put it in your favorites and listen to that, like, so powerful soul transmission that Gerard just dropped because there's so much gold in what you just said in the last three minutes. Like, so much gold. Um and I, 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 it feels like it's mastery of the yes and no. Mastery of the yes and no is knowing how to say yes. What I heard is knowing how to say yes to yourself, knowing how to say yes to like inward time, knowing how to say yes to taking care of your physical body, saying no, saying yes to your dreams, your passion, your purpose, your intuition, your life, and your feelings, your truth, and and really say, leaning into the yes and being really phenomenal at, at putting yourself uh, first. Um, and no to guilt, no to other people's judgment, no to other people's fears, no to the own your own inner critic, no to doubt, insecurities, and uh, lazy mornings, and uh, no to uh, no boundaries with phones, thoughts, and other people, and be phenomenal at, at saying no to uh, things, any choices, any substance, any experience, any person, any relationship that is not in alignment with your soul yes. 
And if you haven't been sitting quiet to know what your soul yes is, then there's no way to discern your yes from no. There's no way to see, does that align? There's no ethical center. There's no passionate purpose or internal alignment that determines what is a yes or a no. And if I, if I really want to be hiking great summits in life, whether that's in relationships, whether that's in my mission, if that's in my health, then there, then there's definitely going to be like staying up super late at night. If, if I, if I need to be training on the mat, like right now, I'm, I'm training and go, going backpacking with my, with my kids, with my twins. And I'm like, so, shit, I'm you know, I'm going to have a 50 pound pack on and we're going to be like putting some miles on and some elevation changes. Like I need to train for that. Well, it's hot here in the summer. So like, that means I need to be up on these P I, I need to be on the trail at 5. AM. Well, that doesn't mean I'm out till one o'clock. So as much as it's fun for me to dance and play with great tribe here in Sedona, like my Saturday nights are not for sale. You know, I, I have a limit. I can say, okay, I can go out till this, but the yes that I'm saying yes to is, and this is just one example of, this is a physical fitness experience, you know, yes, this is a physical yes, a health yes, but it's also how I choose to show up as, as a mom in my relationships with my adult kids, quality time in nature. I'm also choosing to be healthy and fit so that we can, you know, we're not sitting in, in, a, in a parking lot just doing bumper camping, but we're going back into like epic waterfalls where we don't see anybody and nature is just there and there's no chemtrails and there's no cell phone reception and the three of us are just hanging. Like that's, oh, a that's soul beautiful. Yes. You know, that's, that's a so soul beautiful. yes for me, which means that, yeah, there's a lot of things that I got to say no to in order to say yes to that. And, yeah. and, and like same with certain substances, there's certain substances that don't align with a lifestyle caliber that I, that I hold, that I hold myself to. And so there's certain foods, there's certain substances that I just like, that's a hard no. It doesn't mean that there isn't, um, there's more joy. There's more joy in my yes than pain in my no. And mm, I think that, right? That's powerful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So there's that that's where if there is not an alignment with something that lights you up, whether that is a business or a relationship or a health goal that you have, then it's going to be harder to say no to the things because the pain exchange won't be enough to motivate the yes. Like I am lit up about my yes. Yeah. And that's what wakes me up in the morning. Otherwise, if I'm not so lit up, Gerard, my morning just dissipates into the ethers and I'm more reactive. If I don't have something to light me up and get me up, then I haven't sat clearly with my soul yes lately. Yeah. Yeah. And what you said, I think is so powerful too, because what came through for me was like FOMO is real. For like sure. this, especially you know in this generation <laughs> where like everything is literally a freaking in front of our we have a computer that we carry around with us everywhere it's like FOMO is real like you have especially when you start to uh, you start to do the work because when you do the work all of a sudden your aura changes your vibe changes your frequency changes and guess what you're gonna attract the dopest shit parties and friends and dinners and things and trips and all the things and. You want to do all of it, but it's it's important that yes, FOMO is real. It's present; it'll be present. But also looking at like when you have to say no for the short term pain, long term pleasure of whatever that thing is, that goal, that dream, that that trip with your family and your kids, or the, your mom and your dad, or if your grandparents are even alive, or your loved one, and, you know. Or it's again, it's it's that dream, that business, and sometimes you know you have to just like okay, I need to like really focus right now on these things that matter to me now, knowing that you get to, you get to have it all. It's just creating harmony with it. And I just, uh, I, I love that you, you shared that because I do believe that we have a generation that sometimes we, you know, sometimes I, I have entitlement. It's true. Sometimes I feel like I want the thing now, 
I'm, I grew up and it's Uber and all the things. And it's like, we want instant gratification sometimes, you know, especially this, this generation, we're so used to that. And it's important to discern again, that I think the great things in life take time. You know, it's like you can slow down and, and, and it's the simplest things as you slow down and, and enjoy, whether it's that meal or that, you know, that time where you're just sitting in the grass or, you know, the, the big dream you have that is worth it. It's worth you putting in the work and the years that you love because of the difference that you know it's going to create long term and the impact that you're devoted to creating. Same thing with a relationship. And every day there's just, it's going to be, a roller coaster and the ups and downs um, and the FOMO and all the things. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, yes, FOMO, fear of missing out is <laughs> for real. And um, especially if you have a big dream that isn't going to manifest quickly, where you got to lay down the time and lay down the tracks yeah. and do the unsexy thing. Right yeah. now, there's a big dream. I'm like a big dream that is stretching mm. me and it's like, ew, legal contracts. Mm -hmm. Oh, city mm -hmm. zoning. Like those are the things that well, I would much rather be hiking. I'd much rather be ha ha having like just about any other activity. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. about any, anything, you know, dentist, let me go to the dentist instead. <laughs> and so I just I want to acknowledge this, you know, having that dream and the eye on the prize is what's going to be really helping you to get through the unsexy yes. challenges that would, oh, I don't like this. This is difficult. This is hard. That's where a lot of dreams go to die. And that's where a lot of yeah. leaders give up. Um, give up and fall away because it's difficult. Yes. I'd rather just be having fun with my kids. And it's like, Yes, I do. I, I need both. I need to be able to put in. Um, and if I don't have that dream that's lighting me up and seeing what it feels like and the impact that it will have on millions of people, then when, when I get to those unsexy, you know, like not super exciting yeah, tasks. Uncomfortable, uncertain, hard. Yeah. New, like that stretch you, whether it's like, oh, you know, legal contracts or things like that, then uh, I would let the dream go. And it feels like it's just, what are the next two steps? This is one of the, th what are the next two steps? And it might be ask for help. It might be learn a tool. It might be um, somebody else knows this better than I do. It might be, I need support here. Um, I need a team to support that's a big one on a hot tub, yeah. like getting support. That's a big one that I think a lot of listeners, I want you to hear that because we can be lone wolves at times and we can, you know, it's you, you know, you, you get to have support. You get to have nice people to, to call in and not have to feel like you do have to do it alone. It's a really big one. I think that that's, um, I think that's shifted in this last decade. Like, you know, the, 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 the Hopi elders talk about the time of the lone wolf is over. Gather in community. And this is where our strengths weave together so that we are stronger together and that it's not going to take one leader doing it all right now. It's like, wow, somebody else's skills that I don't have. I don't have to learn that. I can, I can learn from you and I can let you lead in that area. And it feels like there's this wisdom of collaboration that is happening that says that flattens the learning curve and accelerates the creativity, because if we are going to be and we need to flatten the timeline and flatten the learning curve to accelerate, you know, new paradigm solutions for planet, for humanity, for environment, um, for business, for health, for education, like there are huge gaps all over the place that uh, working together and collaborating together is going to be the massive accelerator. And what do you think has gotten in the way of that with people working together or um, giving up control? Like, where do you feel that there's opportunity for leaders to, to soften in to more collaboration and like what gets in the way of that? Oh, gosh, I love this question. I, 
I'm wondering if you hear a little echo. Hopefully, okay, cool. It went away. Um, and so I love this so much because this is the essence of my brand, Leaders Create Leaders, right? It's, it's about how are you actually inspiring those around you to become the best version of themselves and then become the star maker and not always have to be the one in the limelight, but you actually can trust and surrender that the people around you get to lead. And that's, a, that's, that's huge. You know, leadership is about two things. It's all about you and it has nothing to do with you. <laughs> it's all about you and it also has nothing to do. And so like learning to master that, that it is about you, how are you embodying the values and how are you showing up and who are you being in the doing that's going to inspire the team and how are you inspiring them to tap into embody those values that your company, your brand stands for. And, and then also just supporting them into understanding their zone of genius and being stars in their roles. And then the biggest and hardest thing is like learning to let go. Oh my God, to trust and let go. We're such controllers, leaders. And so the number one thing, I would say there's two. The first, I'm going to say is what we just talked about is the actual, like what you learn when you go through plant medicine, right? Trust and surrender. You have to learn how to trust and let go and let the team lead. Um, and we can talk about that a little bit more. And the second thing, in my opinion, from my experience has been vulnerability, the lack of vulnerability. And so I was superhero syndrome, Superman. And I showed up and I was doing it all and I can carry it all and I can do it all and all the things and, and showed my team that it was all about, this is before I understood the, the practice of, of tapping into who am I being in the doing. And um, I was just about hustle grind and that, that we talked about earlier works to a certain extent. And the moment that I had a Navy SEAL that I had met Memorial Day weekend, I happen to be in San Diego. I walk into a bar and I'm hanging out in this bar and all of a sudden these two guys walk in. One guy looks like straight up so uh, Sylvester Stallone Rambo, right? Like Rambo walks in this bar <laughs> and next to him is like freaking this huge undertaker from WWF with his hat, both of them with these like the, the army hats on. And I'm like, yo, these guys <laughs> must serve, right? Uh, and uh, I never met a Navy SEAL before this. And um, I, I go up right up to the big guy. I say, excuse me, gentlemen, have you served? Like, yep, we have. And there was a girl with them. I was like, yes, they have. They served. He, you know, 20, 30 years, he just got hurt. He's on. She was celebrating. I was like, oh, can I buy you guys a beer? You know, we follow all these influencers, these new age celebrities. You guys are the real celebrities. You guys are the real influencers. What you do every day back out there in that battlefield for us. Why do you do it? He said for one word freedom for your freedom it was beautiful it was powerful i got a beer at them i hung out with them and the one sylvester sloan his name was paul we connected and they were asking what i was up to and at that time i had i was running my incubator in newark new jersey serving the minorities in the projects teaching them entrepreneurship emotional intelligence financial literacy i flew in guys like lewis house tom billu eric thomas um so many amazing amazing leaders uh and I told him about this social impact project. And that day I left, we said goodbye. And I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I met an ABC. I went home, I was excited. And that was it, right? I was just like, celebrated them. I fly home to Newark, I'm serving. Um, and and I, I, get a, uh, I get a phone call actually, I was actually home. And it was like six in the morning, six or seven in the morning. And one of the guys at the building was like, gee, there's a guy here that looks like Rambo looking for you. And I'm like, Rambo, who the hell is this, Rambo? I drive in, I'm like, no, there's Paul at my incubator. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I walk in, I go, what are you doing here? He's like, to be honest with you, I'm not supposed to be here because I'm still serving as a SEAL and we're not supposed to leave. But I felt so called to come here because of your story. I needed to see it for myself. And I really feel like I can support you and serve you. And that day he sat me down and he looks me in the eyes and he's like, so how do you feel right now? And here's Rambo looking at me about how I feel. I'm like, I cannot bullshit Rambo. <laughs> so I'm like, can I be honest? I'm like, I actually am stressed the fuck out. I have a lot of pressure right now. I feel like I'm holding all this together and I'm, I'm depressed. Like my 
you know, things are going on at home and I'm trying to put it all together. I'm trying to serve all these kids. I'm just, all the things I just pour it out, honestly, transparently, vulnerably. And he, that day told me that it's, a, that's, that what I did was that is leadership. And that as Navy SEALs, that was a key that I never thought. He's like, if I don't learn to be vulnerable and stop being Superman, how do you expect your team to step up and be the leaders? And he's like, when I get shot, it, my, I have to tell my team like, hey, listen, I'm down. And I got to allow the next guy to step forward and lead that team. And, I, and vulnerability, he taught me that day was the key that was missing and how important it was for them as SEALs. And that day changed my life. And so I started to be transparent with my team. I started being honest with my team. And so vulnerability is the key to connection and building an audience as a thought leader. It's the key to creating deep resonance and connection and inspiration and belonging and purpose with your team and your business. And then like we talked, like we talked about earlier, just, and then trusting and surrendering, letting them, go, letting them lead. And if they make mistakes, that means they're moving forward. That means you learn from it and you, that's it. You keep moving, you keep moving forward, but you allow them to, to, to learn and to build with you. Um, and so the, I would say those two things. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, this is, uh, I appreciate, I, I really love this story with, with such a badass dude saying vulnerability is the key to a great team and a great leader. Because I think that that's as part of insecurity that need to be the superhero and to always look like we have our shit together is one of the things that blocks us from receiving support, resting, asking for help, um, and also allowing other people to come forward. And I watched um, I watched one of my teachers do this because he would teach a thing, he would model a thing, and then he would step back and let somebody else do it. Of course he could do it. He'd been doing it, you know, masterfully for all of his life, but that doesn't allow others to develop that skill. It doesn't allow other people to learn and then take over when he's gone. And so I watched him do this. I'm like, that's a master move because my ego is like, well, I can do it better and faster and quicker. It's like, yes, because I've been doing it for a long time. You know, and the same thing as a parent, of course I can wash the dishes faster. Of course I can tie the shoe faster. Um, of course I can do the laundry faster or fold better. Yes, but that doesn't give my kids the opportunity to learn. Of course, I could just give them the money, but that doesn't give them the opportunity to learn how to make the money. And <clears throat> I think that ability to be vulnerable as a parent, as a leader, um, as a business owner in, in family and in a relationship and in a tribe to say, you know what, this isn't my skill, or I'm not sure how to deal with this. I haven't been here before, or I'm I'm not feeling well. And that, you know, allows for the waves of being human. I'm sad. I'm stressed. I'm frustrated. I'm exhausted. I'm inspired. I'm happy. I'm lit up. And to allow for the waves of, of creativity and the seasons of, you know, like you were saying about the elements is that sometimes we are in a spring season where we're birthing something and or a summer where we're really in that active space and prosperous. And sometimes we're in a fall where we've got to surrender and let go, maybe of control, of maybe of needing to do it all or let go of the way things were so that we can make space for something to come in. Sometimes we're in a winter that is like, hey, I'm hibernating. I'm not the producer right now. I'm not the action taker. I'm resting from busy season or I'm healing from a trauma. And I think that that allows the humanity of the cycles that are needed in a relationship as things grow and as a business pulses and contracts that allows for that to happen. And, oh, and I feel so like, good. right? Like, oh, so good. That's <laughs> something that, you know, we talk about in CLM and it's like, oh, yes. Cause like the seasons, it's so true. We go through it and it's like, yeah, just learning how to embrace that and, and be vulnerable and share that and, and, and experience those seasons. And each one is, is a gift in itself. Cause when you are hibernating, you can allow yourself to be creative and think about the vision and what's next. And 
Um, yeah, I just, I love that so much. It's such powerful wisdom. Oh, we can go on about that. It's so important. And I just want to also mention too, that like in learning this, it really allows the, the opportunity for, for, for the infinite growth and quantum growth, because we can be our own liability. Like we are so many, as I can speak more, I'm not a parent as of yet, but you know, as a business owner, as a CEO, as an entrepreneur, like a lot of times we are, we're our own bottlenecks and, the, and you'll see a real business that can really scale when you have actually created a team of leaders that now you can go on vacation and the company's doing better than when you were in the office because you're, you're, you're your own bottleneck. And like, so- isn't that, that, isn't that the thing of like, the ego getting checked is like by me holding on to this and being the bottleneck, I am limiting productivity. I'm limiting efficiency. Um, and I'm in this, I'm in the vice of this right now where my team is waiting for like 10 things. And I'm just like, clearly the way I've set it up with me in the middle is, <laughs> you know, and you know, we were talking about this before the podcast of just like, recognizing how many ways in which we're replaceable and, yes. and the, ego doesn't, the ego doesn't want to acknowledge that that some that somebody else can do this better or faster or more efficiently than i and to to sit you know sit back and allow somebody else whether it's your partner whether it is a colleague whether it is uh, somebody that you hire, somebody else can probably do a lot of the things better, faster, and you know, more efficiently, or a system can do that. And those are the growing pains of the ego wanting to control things and also be in the limelight. And I've, I've watched a lot of amazing leaders or even, you know, actors say, yes, they can be in the front, in front of the camera. And as they understand the craft, of making a movie, they're like, they step back and say, hey, I could be a producer and have other actors come in and maybe play this role better. And I can be behind the scenes as a producer, as a director. And, um, you know, or, or as a mu music producer, getting behind other artists and getting out of, I can teach and coach other people how to do this. And it doesn't always have to be me doing the doing there's that flip into how can I inspire others to shine and lead the leaders, uh, but not have to be in the limelight as much. And I think that's a valuable shift, which takes a lot of letting go of control. Not that you and I have ever struggled with that <laughs> a lot. Oh like right God, now, yes. it's all the way. <laughs> yes, I'm going, honestly, listen, I'm going through this right now, everyone. And I've had to go through it throughout my career, but I'm going through right now with Leaders Create Leaders as we're continuing to expand and, you know, build our, our business. And it's it's been something that I'm recognizing. Like, okay, oh gosh, I get to... And, let go and let this team really do the do the thing and, and run these div divisions of the business and know my role know where is my greatness because if i can let go of all these other things and learn to delegate and learn to trust and learn to and, and build this team then i can just be in that one thing like that one thing that is great as the creator or the visionary or the uh, you know, the, the, whatever that is for you, the artist. And so I love it. So powerful. I, this is my, I think this might be my favorite podcast. <laughs> this is a great. You know, I, I, this is a sweet spot. And I think also when we are going through our growing pains, we also get to grieve, Hey, I used to be the one that did that thing. And I, I liked doing that. I had, that was a whole 10 years of doing that. And now somebody else is doing that. And I think that as we grow and as we evolve and as things change, there's also a space for grieving the way it was. And I think that there's, that there's value in that, that saying, Hey, you know, I'm not the one that does that anymore. Somebody else does that. And, and, and I think that as that's part of the letting go in the fall season is to, is to grieve that I don't do that thing anymore. And I'm growing into this thing. And the desire to do this is greater 
that I get to say goodbye to that. And I get to say, hey, this was, this was a wonderful time that I played that role or I did that part in the business or in the relationship. Now my role is changing. And to really embrace the new is also to be masterful at letting go and grieving and saying goodbye so that there, we're not bringing resentment into the new role or um, feeling not enough because I should be doing it all. If I'm really a good leader, I should be in the trenches all the time and, and sometimes letting go of the guilt and shame of not doing certain tasks that allows you to be the visionary or to play a different master for role where you can be replaced with those tasks. And I know that I've felt guilt and shame for not being in the trenches sometimes or having somebody clean my house or somebody else do, you know, uh, that role that I used to do and trust that I'm growing and I need to let go of the old roles and the old ways and, and to acknowledge the process of that so that you can make space for who you're becoming um, yeah. and, and like shed the skin. If we use a snake analogy of like, I've got to let go of this role of this sheath that used to fit me, but it doesn't fit me anymore. And there's usually yeah. some letting go and some grief and, and yeah. some goodbye that I think is necessary. I, I really love that. What came through for me is I recently went through um, something that really connected to that, um, the grieving aspect. And yeah. there's just you know, two things I want to just mention is for there's the, there, yes, the, the, the grieving and I want to share something with that. And then there's also like this essence that came through of like the celebration, the honor and the celebrating yourself that I witnessed so many people struggle with, like celebrating themselves, celebrating the little things, celebrating that version of you and those wins and, and getting, creating that habit of like celebrating yourself, honoring yourself, celebrating the growth, celebrating all the small things, whether personal, big, the evolution of who you're becoming is so important. And then the, the grieving, you know, recently I had a, a watch um, I, I uh, built a company called EliteDaily.com, and um, in five years, it became the largest online publication for millennials in the country, and we sold to a billion-dollar company, and uh, this exit change was life-changing for me. I got to do things that I, I always dreamed of doing, and taking care of my mom and dad, and paying off their mortgages, paying off their debt, surprising my sisters with cars, and taking care of them, and just, just so many amazing things. One of those things was that I actually bought myself a watch and it was like this totem that represented this accomplishment in my life. Uh, and it was this expensive watch. I mean, this was like a $60,000 watch, um, an AP they call it. And not too long ago, the watch got stolen. And I went through the biggest like just grief because I was like, it's not the watch or even the amount of money, but it was like the meaning and I couldn't let go. And then I realized like, you know, I get to just know that that's, that it doesn't change that experience in my life. And there's a version of me that I was then and that I've outgrown and that this, this, this is something that I get to let go of and just honor that version of Gerard that built that and did and, and accomplished that. And, 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 and embrace this new version of me that doesn't need a watch anymore to, <laughs> to represent any kind of accomplishment at all and, and create a new totem and a new symbol and a new uh, motivation of, of the impact that I want to create in the world. And um, I just went through that. And I remember the next day, just, I went and like hid and like yeah. cried because I was at a I was throwing a bachelor party. I was I asked to be the best man, which to this day is like one of the greatest accomplishments of my life is being chosen as a best man for someone I grew up with since like we were kids. And so I was around all these men, all these guys, and I and I just like I had to hold it together mm -hmm. so that the watch got stolen at our villa and like continue to hold the the space to to make sure to celebrate my friend. And I remember just the next morning taking the space to just grieve that loss and like embrace that. And that's just a personal story. I mean, every, it's different for everyone. And as you're outgrowing this ver these versions of you, but um, mm -hmm. it's about that called share, to share that. Yeah, you, you might be letting go of a business that defined you, that, uh, that you, you know, that was representing a decade of your life and a lot of passion and a lot of sweat and tears. And you might 
be selling that or it might be closing. It might mm -hmm. be, you know, a relationship, same kind of thing. It, it might be going through its evolution and coming to an end or a new beginning. Um, I just did a renewal of vows for a couple that is, um, you know, celebrating their, their anniversary, but also closing that chapter because now they're, they're pregnant and becoming parents. And I think that a conscious leader is going to be really good at letting go of past versions of them or past things, whether it's a watch, a business, a, a zeros in the bank account, an identity, a followership, you know, an accolade that defined them. Because if it's still, if we're still holding on and bound by that, then it begins to confine us. And it doesn't allow the next version to expand. It doesn't allow a new business opportunity. It doesn't allow a new relationship or a new chapter of a relationship to begin if we're holding on to the past anything, a past financial belief, a past identity, a past person, a past object that, you know, because billions of dollars can limit us, right? You know, oh, I have to maintain this. That can be a limitation of how you choose to live going forward because that might constrict you in some way. And, and that can be the death of living even though on paper it looks like we've got everything because we, you know, there is that we, we've lost that freedom that the Navy, Navy SEAL fights for. And we want to be able to be free to keep reinventing ourselves and not be bound by any of those things, material relationship, a status, a dollar amount, so that we're still free to keep evolving and say, you know what, I might need to like walk away from all of it and you know, start something else. And I think that's truly going to be a, a leadership thing where we're not bound or confined by anything. Oh, yes. So, so good. And I'm just so glad that that, that got channeled because that's it. You know, we, we can bound ourselves to these identities and we're, we're these multidimensional, ever evolving beings and that's that's our gift is that we have an imagination that can create and you know so many things and infinite potential and so i just absolutely love that and it resonates because it's interesting when you said it i was like yeah that's what it was for me because i remember taking it out of you know the instagram thing is real and i was like i finally <laughs> took it out of the instagram bio the exit you know just just simply put gerard adams leaders yeah. create leaders and like let it go that was a version i'm proud of us did that but now it's like new beginnings and and, it, and now it's exciting. It finally, as I grieved it, it did, then you allow the space for the excitement to come through for whatever that is for you, where it's like, oh my God, now how exciting, you know, it's like, oh, is that new thing, how we all love, right? Whether it's that new version of you or that new idea, that new, uh, just, just whether it's art or experience, relationship is just, yeah. And, and, and uh, well, that it's, it's that me. death, it's that death, it's that death and rebirth. It's that death of the ego and death of that version that only allows the uh, opportunity to be reborn and have that infinite space to play in. Yes, yes. If we're great at grieving and great at goodbyes, we'll have more energy to create with. And that's, that's one of the game changers, I think, that uh, a conscious leader versus an unconscious back to reaction, then the loss define me or the wind defines you, which doesn't allow the energy of the space for there to be something new. And um, it feels like if we were to just uh, in, in close here, just like look at what are some qualities, would this just bounce back and forth between qualities that we aspire to that we're working on, that we are choosing to embody, yes. and that we that we invite listeners and watch. You know, if they're watching, is to say, "Hey, how how are you doing on your scale of embodying this quality um, that shapes a conscious leader?" And whether that leader is leading in your family, in your relationships, in your business, in your community, in the classroom, in, 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 a, in a hospital, in a, wherever. Um, because anybody can be a conscious leader. It, you don't need a, a million followers. You don't need to be a billionaire to yeah. be a conscious leader. It's, it's uh, you know, Robin Sharma has this book called Lead Without a Title. 
Mm. And I, I love that vision that it, I don't have to be acknowledged for my leadership. It's just what is done. It's just who I am. It's just who I am. Okay, so let's trade back and forth some of the some of the top qualities that we aspire to or we've seen embodied in leaders that 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 we're inviting all of us to to lean into more. What's one of your top ones? Integrity. Oh yes, I was like, that was mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are on the same bread again. Yeah. Integrity. I just want that, I, I want, if you're listening and watching, I just want you to land, just breathe that in. Like, what does integrity mean to you? And where are you in integrity in your life, in your relationships, in your choices, in your health? Um, and where are you not in integrity and to just journal about that sit with that let this be a question of where am i not in internal alignment with something that is out of integrity with my soul in some way in what area of life yeah Ooh. integrity all right i'm gonna go with well ethics kind of sits right in there with integrity to me i kind of feel like those are interchangeable in some ways but i'm gonna go with discernment um wow. mm. so yeah. yes. yes discernment like the ability to discern what is in alignment and what is not what is a yes what is no what is true what is false what is mine what is not mine like in in integrity uh, with with discernment i like guess a very important leadership skill i love that the next one for me um is responsibility mm -hmm. and knowing that you are source and that if it's if it's to be it's up to me as uh, one of my amazing <laughs> friends says jenna phillips ballard um, and so just really recognizing that, that you are the creator and that, you know, we, we tend to have these excuses and we want to blame and we want to point fingers and we want to you know, have everything that happened to us instead of just saying, hey, like, I am source yeah. and it's my responsibility for what we are experiencing. Yes, I, I feel that a word that fits with that is accountability. That is being accountable for my part. Uh, being accountable for my messes, being accountable for uh, where I've been destructive to self or others. And so, yes, responsible. Yes, accountable. Yes. Uh, I feel another important quality is is compassion. And and I want it, one that doves tails with that is is sensitivity to be able to have compassion and sensitivity for our own shadow, the shadow of others, the state of things where, where we're disconnected, where we're lost and, you know, compassion for our humanness and, uh, and sensitivity there, I think is, is important so that we're not leading from a place of harshness, um, or coldness. There is a, so good, like a com compassion. And that's yeah. been a tough one for me. That's been one that I've actually this year have really leaned into. I didn't know what the hell compassion. I was like, someone asked me, like, what's compassion? Like, how would you define compassion? I had to like really like understand how, what it's like to love, even if I don't agree. And I think the world needs that more than ever before right now. It's like, you can still disagree and still love and still under, be understanding and lean into that um, and giving that love no, no matter what, unconditionally. Yeah, especially with such polarities as we've seen magnified in the last year. Yeah. People in this camp, that camp, this po political mask, no mask, vax, no vax, like all of these different things. And as we just see disparity being amplified, um, being able to have compassion for what brings about that perspective or that belief or that pain. And I feel like what, what has brought me to compassion is the most is when I do my own inner healing. 
back to responsibility and accountability. Then I get to look at where I, you know, if I'm having trouble with somebody else's anger or pain that, you know, trauma that I've experienced at somebody else's hand, as an example, like the core wounds, right? Um, that if I go deeply into my own inner wounds and I, and I begin to heal those and have compassion for the part of me that is hurt, then I go to responsibility that says, where have I hurt others? Where have I hurt myself? Where have I caused harm intentionally and liked it when I'm really honest about, you know, the part of me that um, hurt people from a hurt place or that was unconscious or greed or fear or insecurity or pain or whatever it was that was motivating my choices where I made fun of or harmed somebody physically, emotionally, energetically. And I think that's what opens the doorway for compassion is when I get to look at how I've done things that have hurt others or that have been unconscious, where I've lied or been deceptive. And it's like, uh, yeah, I've done all of those things right. and more. And like when you get to see your own humanness and yeah. really be responsible and accountable, I think that, Gerard, is what opened the doorways of compassion for the greatest villains in my life and the people that I would tend to judge without compassion is that, hey, have I been a power hungry asshole? Yeah. Have I been deceitful? Sure. Have I betrayed people? You bet. Have I stolen and not cared about it? You bet. And I think that that when I'm really honest with my humanness, that's what opens the doorways for compassion. It doesn't mean yeah, I agree yeah. with the somebody's choices or their actions. In, in no way does it mean that I condone the other's behaviors, but I can relate to it. For sure. And that was the key for me was like actually saying, how am I lack how am I lacking compassion for myself and for what I've what I've done in my own life? So that meant I can lean in and give it to others. The yeah. next one for me, this will be my last one. It, it's really present for me is, well, presence is another one, but I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. But, but for me, what was potent for me was possibility. Like mm-hmm. living in the possibility, not coming from scarcity. So many, so many leaders I see that are unconscious are making those decisions from a place of lack, from a place mm-hmm. of scarcity versus abundance and possibility. And that, that to me is, is a big difference is, to, is those that are coming from this is possible. I can do like this. I believe in this faith abundance. There's enough for everyone to go around. There's enough for me, everyone. And so that's the, that was the next Yes. Point. Passion, purpose, possibilities. I love it. I love it. You know, and that's being a, a positivitarian, a possibilitarian is that um, hope and, and uh, a pop possibilities. Um, I love that. You know, this is where the dream you know, where, the, where we've got to dream another reality. Um, and that goes hand in hand, I'd say, with my last one is courageous action. Ooh, yes. <laughs> it's a, it's a ch- ch- combo move. And this is, you know, like where we started, where we talked about the gap between where we are and if we take your last one here about and what is possible and what is passionate and, and where can we have faith? I think that us, us, you, me, listeners, watch it, you know, those watching and listening, you, me, us, it's time for courageous action. It's time to go, you know what? If you don't like it, then get in the game, get in the arena, bring your idea, bring your solution, bring your gift bring your tool, bring your product, bring your wisdom, your experience, your gift, like courageous action to start putting it in to the realm of possibility so that we can start manifesting the new reality without courageous action. We're just talking about it. And I love that. Get shit done, man. (laughs) And and have zero fucks and have zero fucks about the people that don't believe like, you know what? You're either with it or get out the way. Like That's it. Right. I love the give zero fucks because if you're in the arena, you know, the people that are up in the nosebleed section that are just, you know, throwing trash and (laughs) wrappers and like food, it's like, no, you don't get a vote. You do not get a vote. 
you might not like it, but you're, I'm not waiting your opinion from the peanut gallery of not being in the arena, like putting your book out there or like looking at different education possibilities or, you know. A, a, this is a, a big one too for those that are stepping forward in their personal brands. Those yes. are that are like, I want to have a voice. I'm ready to start putting myself out there. I want to make an impact and I'm going to step forward and, and I see so many that are ready to do that. You're, and I know who you are. You're listening to this right now. This is for you. And it's time to let go of the fear of other people's opinions and that faux po and the comparison <laughs> and that you're not good enough and the imposter syndrome and the labels and society says like, you know, you, that's it. It's like zero fucks of all those people because the those people that will judge you are those that actually aren't at stepping forward and have the courage to put themselves out there and stand up for what they believe in and stand for purpose. Yes, yes. And that, that takes that discernment to be able to say, not important, other people's judgments, other people's opinions. That's that discernment that we talked about is like a power move to this is not relevant. It's none of my business. And it gets no energy. And uh, yes, yes, brother. <laughs> this has been so juicy. I know this is going to be one of our most listened to podcasts. I, I, you and I vibe, brother. Same page. Me and too. Uh, because of that, I see you as a pillar, uh, as a leader, and committing to you in this moment that I'm here. I am here to support you leading. I'm here to support you shining. I'm here to support you shedding and stepping into this refined next leader as you move into another level of commitment in your partnership mm -hmm. and a next chapter of your business and your service and your passionate mission. I just want you to let you know, you've got this sister, oh, wow. your back. I wow. have your back brother. Okay? I got chills and <laughs> oh, it feels so good. Something I've had to learn, you know, is to receive and I fully receive that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. I, I really just, I felt that and oh yes, I love it. And I just, it's juicy. Me and you, we have a vibe. I'm so excited about what we get to co-create together. Um, I am so appreciative of having this opportunity to be on your platform and share what needed to come through and know that I feel the exact same way. It is reciprocated and that I am count on me as a soul brother in your tribe to support you in what you are doing and what you're creating in the world, who you're being, because we need each other. All of, we need each other, we need tribe. Um, and so I'm here for you, I'm here for all of it. You know, whenever you need that, that, that warrior spirit, you know, like just let me know to come through for your tribe and for, for you. Um, and I'm so excited about our friendship. Yes, there's an idea incubator already happening about, you know, collaborative possibilities. So stay tuned, everybody, for more magic. Um, and uh, thank you, for brother. I receive that. You know, my lone wolf days are over and mm -hmm. I love collaborations. I love weaving medicine together. And this is the amplifier. This yeah. is the amplifier. And uh I get to receive that. I'm not stopping that at all. Mm. I'm like, bring it on. I will. Yeah. You have so many magical gifts that I can receive. And I think if we could all just be better receivers of like, wow, someone wants to help. Someone's yeah. got advice. Someone wants to give me a gift. Uh, yes. Thank you. Sure. Not, oh, no, no, I couldn't. I've completely passed that. Yeah. I've, I've, I've eliminate, a eliminated that from my vocabulary. And con oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, oh yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I feel like yes. that's this generation now. Like this is the generation of collaboration and co-creation and co-elevation. Like, let's go. Let's do this. Um, tell everybody, my brother, uh, mm. where they can find you, follow you, and I'm going to be on your podcast too. So, oh, I'm so excited! Yes, you're going to be on the Leaders Create Leaders podcast. So, make sure to go check it out, subscribe. I'm doubling down on that now as I've settled into my new home. Um, we also have a YouTube show that's six seasons. Uh, so, instead of Netflix, go on YouTube and Gerard Adams TV. And we've interviewed some of the most unbelievable modern day leaders, artists, cre conscious creators. Um, and we are getting ready to open up 
for our, our wait list for Conscious Leaders Mastermind. Mm-hmm. Um, in our, in, inside of Leaders Create Leaders, we have a, an amazing six-month container uh, retreat that I'm excited about, you know, having Anahata participate and be a part of um, in this next CM, CLM3 container. And if you're interested in learning more about that, you can just shoot me a DM, uh, CLM, or go to leaderscreateleaders.com. Yes. And so um, where do they find you on Instagram then for DM? Yep. Gerard Adams, G-E-R-A-R-D-A-D-A-M-S. Yes. We will have that in the show notes. We will have the link to your program um, so people can find it easily because I, I just know that you're delivering a lot. And I'm grateful to have been a part of this this program last time. Looking mm. forward to continuing the magic. Yes. And the, ooh, ooh, yeah, dancing it out and um, creating more leaders as we recreate ourselves over mm. and over again. Uh, um, Gerard, I love you, brother. I'm excited for this next chapter for you. And um, want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you are still here, if wow. you've tuned in, you're our people. You mm-hmm. are our people, <laughs> the yes. ones that are stepping in courageously, taking action to lead in life, to lead impactful life, purposeful lives that make a difference. And we need your magic. We need your need your medicine. And so thank you. And if you are our people and you're listening, please share this episode. Please give us a note in the in the you know comments leave a review, share it with somebody, um, share it with many, put it on your platform so that this kind of conversation that's inspiring, igniting, and um, just such soul medicine that more people get to receive it, for sure. So, yes, if you yes. share it to your Insta story, please tag me because I want to meet, I want to see who you are and repost it. And yes, yes. I love it. Share, yes. share. Tag us, Anahat Ananda. That's where you can find me on Instagram, shamangelichealing.com here in Sedona. Uh, next level transformational healing for individuals, groups, and we've got retreats coming up. So go check those out. And I'm excited to continue this journey. Thank you, Shamangelic uh, Healing podcast fans. We love you. Thank you, Gerard. Blessings Please. on every step. All right. Love you. Bye, Hans.